Similarly, the structure and mandates of senior ranks of commissions of commission has been aligned and cemented with rationalized selection modalities. Additionally, the AU's commission organs and specialized agencies have also been restructured. The new Partnership for Africa's Development has been transformed into the Africa Union Development Agency, ushering in a new era of ambitious pursuit of shares, shared prosperity. Likewise, 42 out of the 55 institutions have been analyzed and reviewed, while the structure of the Commission has been fully reviewed and approved by the Executive Council. As, Mohammed, as Musa Fakisori has told us, there is some work to be done by other institutions to make sure that what has been agreed upon is progressed to conclusion. A new AU for a new era is beginning to take shape. And the next phase of reforms, which I am privileged to lead, will complete this exemplary work. A critical reform that I shall focus on is the division of labor between the member states, the Africa Union, and the regional economic communities, as well as the AU specialized agencies. Particularly, there are functional overlaps that urgently need resolution to enhance our union's operational efficiency. Economists have predicted another year of slow growth in the world in 2024, meaning that budget constraints will continue to limit our capacity to execute the AU Agenda 2063. There will be no resources to waste, and greater efficiency is imperative. We cannot afford to spread our meager resources too thin across institutions that perform overlapping functions. As I said during the IDA 21 Replenishment Summit in Nairobi, as African heads of state and government, we are strongly committed to reforming the Africa Union Commission to make it fit for purpose and to empower it with the capacity to engage the rest of the world on behalf of the 1.4 billion people in this continent. At the same time, it is time for us to reform the Pan-African Parliament to enable it exercise oversight over the AU Commission to make it much more accountable and to finally establish, to est finally establish an African Court of Justice. Let me, let me put this in context. I have had occasion to have a conversation with uh, Dr. Kaberuka on AU financing. I have had occasion to engage with Professor Mkoko on this reform process. And as I have said, I am very confident of what President Kagame and this team have achieved so far. What is remaining in my estimation is about four areas that uh, I intend that we will, all of us, focus. Number one is the AU Commission. As Mohammed Fak uh, Musa Fakis has said, there is need for greater internal efficiency and alignment so that we have a fit for purpose Africa Union Commission that delivers on its mandate without blockades, roadblocks, and unnecessary bureaucracy that is limiting its ability to deliver at the moment and to align it with the other institutions so that we do not end up with a dysfunctional commission. There is need for us to have a conversation as member states. And there is need for us to agree that we need to give the Commission sufficient power, donate sufficient power and authority to the Commission 
to be able to act on our behalf. We cannot have an organization that we have appointed. We cannot have a commission that we have appointed, that we pay for, and we have denied them the authority to execute the mandate for which we have set it up to achieve. We must make up our minds that if we have set up this institution and we have given it a job to do, we must give it the power to do it. We must give it the authority to do it. Number two is that every institution must be held to account. And therefore, the accountability mechanism is also going to improve the quality of service that we will get from the Commission. As it is now, the Pan-African Parliament is an advisory organization, has, doesn't have authority to interrogate the budget, doesn't approve some of the appointments of the institution, does not you know, participate meaningfully in the governance of our organization. And we need to interrogate whether the 275 members is not too big an organization for us to fund, and whether we should rationalize the size of the Pan-African Parliament and give it sufficient work and mandate and authority in line with the Constitutive Act of the African Union. Like all democratic institutions, for example, in Kenya today, there's a big debate in Parliament because it is our belief in institutions. We have an executive that proposes certain measures. The people and Parliament interrogate it, provides oversight, and we have a judicial system that also makes sure that if there are any issues, the judiciary can speak to those issues. So our Pan-African Parliament must take up a proper place in the governance of our institution so that we can guarantee ourselves that these institutions will work accountably. Listening to our chair and the obvious and sometimes, you know, unavoidable conflicts between different institutions and even the overlap that is there. There is no mechanism that is in place to resolve some of these conflicts some of the overlaps. And that is why it is absolutely necessary for us to finally establish the African Court of Justice. That way, if there is a conflict between the PRC 